When you hear American performance car, you imagine one of these, right? Well, today I'm going to show you the most insane modern American cars that I bet you haven't heard of. Some of you are probably already thinking, oh, these are all riced out kit cars for Ford Fusions or something. And to those people, I say, no, not this time. No way. We got you. Not a chance. In only one of these cases, the company uses another high performance American car as a donor, but I only kept it because the base car is so good and the rest of them were really built from the ground up. Let's get started. Side note, I saved the best cars for the end of the list, so I definitely recommend sticking around because these get real good real quick. With that being said, the first car is the Saline S1. Different from their previous car, the S7, these are designed to be nimble rather than a straight line monster. It's got 450 horsepower from a turbo inline four engine and weighs less than 2,700 pounds. It comes with a six speed manual, which is pretty sweet, but pricing starts at a heavy $100,000. And because of that, other problems arise. I say a performance car costing that much should have a more exciting engine and at least 500 horsepower. Make it five, four, three, take it or leave it. The next car on the list is the Panos Avizano. An LS3 making 430 horsepower comes standard, but you can get a supercharger slapped on it to make 150 more. From the back, it looks very Maserati or Ferrari-ish, and I think it's pretty cool. These also come with a six-speed manual, and although they have a good engine and half-decent performance, anyone would still have a tough time justifying the price, which is 160 grand. The third car is the Falcon F7. The cheapest option comes with its 620 horsepower LS7 with mid 3-0 to 60 and a top speed over 190, both of which are pretty good. If you're looking for more power, babe, you can get it with a twin turbo Lingenfelter V8 rated for 1100. This will get it to 60 in 2.7 seconds, down a quarter mile in 11 seconds, and past 200 miles per hour. I say the front looks all right, but where it really shines is the back end, which reminds me a lot of a Ferrari 308. It's nice. I also like the interior styling and layout. It's incredibly driver oriented, so the passenger really looks like a beta, but who cares about passengers when you've got a supercar, am I right? Especially when prices range from 195 to 250 grand. Car number four is the one that's built off something else, but if you say it's trash with a fifth gen Viper as a donor car, first of all, you're stupid. You could really only justify that by saying you wanted more Vipers on the road which honestly would be pretty fair because they were awesome and I miss them and Dodge needs to bring them back. But anyway, these have that 8.4 liter V10 making 745 horsepower. The body's all carbon fiber and from the back, it looks fantastic. It'll hit 60 in three seconds and a top speed of 218. The price tag, unfortunately, is 286,000 and they planned on making 50, but only got through five. I'm not saying this is better than a Viper, but I think this definitely meets supercar criteria for looks, sound, power, and speed. The second to last car is the Equus Bass 770. Don't be fooled by this one. When I first saw glimpses of it, I thought it was some dinky Challenger Mustang with a new front end. Not this time. This car was designed from the ground up, but inspired by the classic muscle cars of the 60s and 70s. The front's obviously Dodge, the side is very Mustang, and the back is all out Camaro. And what did they give it for an engine? The LS9 from a C6 ZR1, but with an exhaust setup to make it sound like the classics. The 640 horsepower takes it to 60 in three and a half seconds and up to 200 miles per hour, all with back seats for the family man. Beyond a fantastic exterior, they did a pretty good job with the interior too. I'm a little iffy on the steering wheel, but I really love those retro dials. At this point, you probably want to know how much more it costs than a typical muscle car, right? Well, pricing starts at 250k and can climb up to 290. Whoa, what? Yeah, it's pretty expensive, but if you imagine being an old rich geezer who wants to relive the good old days with modern performance, this becomes real appealing. The final car on the list, most insane American car you haven't heard of, and the one that's probably in the thumbnail is the SSC Tuatara. It's from the same company that built the Ultimate Aero, which was the fastest car before the Veyron Supersport. The Tuatara looks are from an ex Pininfarina designer, and before I drool everywhere, I'll shoot through the specs. Influenced by fighter jet aerodynamics, it has a lower drag coefficient than a Venom F5 or a Gera, and a dry weight less than 2,800 pounds. 
Its 5.9 liter twin turbo V8 makes 1750 horsepower on E85, 1350 on 91 octane, revs to 8800 RPM, and goes through a seven speed transmission that shifts in less than 100 milliseconds. All of this means its zero to 60 is two and a half seconds, and it's expected to be able to exceed 300 miles per hour, which makes sense when you compare it to other hypercars. It really looks unbelievable, and I'd say just as good as its competitors. Even the interior looks like a mix between Ferrari and Koenigsegg. Unfortunately, with the hypercar looks and speed comes a hypercar price. The Tuatara starts at 1.6 million and goes up to 1.9 fully equipped, but I absolutely think this has a spot at the dream hypercar table. Besides the Tuatara, which fits its class pretty well, the problem with these types of cars is they're obviously not mass produced. So costs are way higher than the more refined, faster cars they compete with, and your purchase isn't backed by a big global company. To buy one of these, you'd have to have a ton of spare cash and you'd have to see one and think, I need it! Don't forget to tell me in the comments which of these is your favorite. As always, give this video a big ol' thummy boy if you enjoyed it and subscribe to Liberty Drives for American Auto News as well as more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Have a great day.